Hi, this is your host Sapnil Bharatiya and welcome to Mainframe Matters and today we have with us Mark Wilson, GSE UK Region Manager. Mark, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Of course, today we are going to talk about GSE UK 2024 conference. But before we talk specifically about the conference, let's talk about what is GSE and how are you involved with it? GSE is a not-for-profit organisation based in Europe, GuideShare Europe. And its real, its real um, mantra is all about what we call give and take. And that's giving back to the IT community, largely in the mainframe space, to enable and train the next wave of IT technicians across many disciplines, but with a, with a focus on mainframes. And what does the name Guide Share Europe actually mean? Well, that's interesting because it goes back to where originally, way back in the 1970s, 1980s, there were two organisations. There was Share and there was Guide. And Guide was G.U.I.D.E and then Share. Share was fairly strong in North America and Guide was strong in Europe. So what they decided to do was come together in Europe as GSE Guide Share Europe and Share still runs in North America. So you see two groups with very much the same ideals, one in North America called Share and GSE Guide Share Europe in, in Europe, both really um, largely run by volunteers to, to, to drive education and to get tenured professionals to give back to the community to help train and mentor the next wave of technicians. When was this uh, merger happened? It was well before my time, but I believe it was sometime in the, the mid-1980s, early 1990s. I mean, I've been involved with GSE just, just as an attendee from the, the late 80s. Um, and we were, we were always called GuideShare Europe then, and it got, it got shrunk to just GSE probably 20 years ago, something like that. The reason I also asked that question was uh, to understand that how much water has flown under the bridge since uh, the merger happened. Because if you look at the modern world, we are actually lucky to be living in this era. A lot of technological innovation is happening, the whole container, the Kubernetes, cloud native, and now Gen AI is happening, EVs are happening, ton of things are happening. While we do have a lot of these shiny objects, there are a lot of fundamental foundational technology which are like kind of backbone of modern world uh, we can talk about linux kernel which is 30 40 years or we can talk about mainframe which predates me so uh, how has gsc evolved over time or their focus has always been on a specific technology or a specific area i think our primary focus has always been the IBM mainframe space. But as the world has changed and the IT landscape has changed and we have this more hybrid world, we've had to become more aware of, you know, the other platforms and the integration and how that technology can assist the mainframe or how the mainframe can assist that technology. You know, AI is just as at home on an IBM mainframe as it is on an x86 platform, um, Gen AI, Kubernetes, Linux, mainframe, not mainframe, you decide what qualities of service you want. So because of that, GSE has changed. If you look at GSE UK, when I first started to get involved, we had what we call working groups, and they were very much aligned with mainframe technology, large systems, the operating system, CICS for transaction processing, IMS and DB2 for databasing, MQ. But now we've got Z Linux tracks, now we've got AI tracks, now we've got, you know, women in IT, because our world has changed so much in the, I dare say, 44 years that I've been doing this. It's completely different today. And we've had to evolve because of that. Yeah, we, we talk a lot internally at GSE about growing the next wave of architects, people who understand, have multi-disciplines, multi multi-platform. 
No, very well said. Uh, while you know we are changing, while we do have to keep an eye on the latest thing, at the same time, some of these technologies like mainframe is there. We also have to attract modern developers. Now to attract modern developers, there are two-fold approach. Either we modernize our interfaces. I mean, of course, the underneath technologies cannot be modernized because actually mainframe solve a lot of problem that we are now trying to solve in the cloud native world, whether it's scale or storage or networking. Uh, at the same time, we also have to embrace modern technologies to attract modern developers. So when it comes to mainframe and when it comes to GSE UK, what kind of things that keep you folks busy these days where you're like, either we continue to support the old generation of main, uh, mainframers or to attract the next breed of mainframers? Yes, yeah, so we certainly from a, from a UK GSE UK region perspective, we've we've tackled that we in in kind of three different ways. We um, a number of years ago we started a new working group called a 101 working group. Um, that was a new phrase to me. It's something that's used quite often in North America. But basically, a working group that is all about doing introduction sessions to mainframe technology. So we have a main a 101 track that takes the GSE message, the IT, the mainframe message into colleges and universities, and we bring them to the conference, but teach them the basics, the intro to mainframes. We then follow that up with a 102 working group, which is a little bit more in depth. Perhaps they've done one or two years come into the 101 group. They then move to the 102. And once they've done that for a short period of time, go out into the wider, wider working groups. Add to that, we've launched an AI and a what we call an app dev track. And the app dev track is really about modern development practices with all that technology that people are used to off the mainframe, whether it be Git, whether it be Jenkins, whether it be SonarCube, it doesn't matter, whether it be an Eclipse IDE. I mean, I, I grew up in the days of a green screen mainframer. I don't log on to the mainframe anymore. I do all mine from an Eclipse desktop interface. Yeah, write my code, send it off to the mainframe, does what it wants, come back. So if if old dinosaurs like me can transform, so can we teach the, the youngsters um, just how strong a position the mainframe has in the IT landscape. Not It's not just about mainframe, it's, it's about the, the role that we can play. And that's, that's kind of the message we have when we talk to the, the newer generation of mainframers. And this is also a very good kind of opportunity to also talk about the role of mainframe in modern world because most of the folks they don't even realize that every time we are doing any transaction it goes through two or four mainframe uh, so talk a bit about where is mainframe in the modern world so i i kind of answer that quite i get asked that question quite a lot and 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 what i say to people is yeah wouldn't it be a useful exercise to turn off all the mainframes in europe just for an hour and just see what happened to the economies in all the different countries. Now, of course, we couldn't do that. The second way I explain it is walking down, walking down the, 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 the high street and pointing out all of the financial institutions, all of the airlines, all of the retailers that use mainframe at the core of their business. And that's where the mainframe sits. It might not be how you interact with the mainframe. You might have something off host where you are presented with a nice a nice UI to get to an application. But the workhorse, the securable workhorse, is the mainframe at the center of it. It might be as a transaction server, might be as a database server. But large organizations still today globally rely very heavily on this technology. And what I find most interesting is most people use it three or four times a day and have no idea that they're actually doing it. Thank you so much. Now, if I can ask, I'll, now if I may also ask, can you talk about what kind of activities at least GSE UK is involved with? Uh, and of course, we'll also talk about the upcoming conference, but let's talk about the activities that you folks do to address some of the challenges that we just talked about. 
Yes, so what, what we have is a, is a structure that we call working groups, and each working group tends to be aligned to some sort of technology. So it might be the security working group, it might be the 101 group, which is training the youngsters. It might be the large systems working group. And what we'll do is we'll do throughout the year, we'll do either face-to-face -face meetings or WebEx webinar type sessions where we ask um, volunteers to come and impart their knowledge to the audience. So if we do a full day, we probably get four or five sessions um, from technologists or architects or business leaders to come and explain what they've been doing or explain the latest version of the technology. But the showpiece event for GSE UK is obviously at the annual conference. That, you know, that's, that's where we put a lot of energy and effort into. Um, that's an in-person event. But obviously in 2020, when the, the world shut down, we pivoted to a virtual conference for 2020 we did the same in 2021 um, but the the virtual conference was so successful that we've actually kept the virtual conference in place so if you think of what we do from a UK perspective now we get an in-person conference the best part of four days 25 30 vendors 650 attendees and 17 tracks with five sessions in each track for three and a half days I can't do the math, but it's, you know, it's a lot of sessions. And then we pivot that to the virtual, where some of the sessions do get repeated because not everybody can be at the in-person. But our first, in -per our first virtual conference in 2020, we had over 1,200 registered visitors to it. And that was a global audience because it was, um, it was virtual. So we're all about taking technical content or personal development content because we do a lot of you know train the trainer how to present technical material how to manage upwards how to manage downwards and do all that kind of sessions but it's all about taking that knowledge and and getting that out to this this pretty much global audience now of course i will not ask you what are the sessions that folks should attend because you know it's your baby so every session is important but just also talk about what are the things folks should expect uh, who will be attending it either in person or virtual and uh, what is the what, what they should do to get the most out of this event so for me to get the most out of that in person event it's to actually be be present you yeah, don't come to the conference and go and sit in your hotel room and work all day and just come out for an hour here, here and there. It really is an event where you need to be active in the community. You need to attend the technical sessions, um, go and, and network. The, the atmosphere and the network opportunity there are, uh, I'd like to say, the best in the, in, in the business, but we're right up. We're right up there. Um, everybody I talk to when I travel, I've just come back from a conference in North America, say the best conference they go to is GSE UK. GSE does other conferences around Europe that are just as good. I'm personally passionate about GSE UK. But I do I do think the, the atmosphere and the vibe, you get a lot out of the conference if you put a lot in and and putting a lot in means go and sit in the sessions participate in the sessions come and listen to the lunch and learns you know, listen to the keynotes and engage the the industry peers that we will have there from all of the large vendors from from IBM and Broadcom and BMC and Rocket and 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 you know all the other organizations will be there it's a fabulous opportunity to go and talk to the real experts and can you talk about what kind of collaboration GSE UK has with the Open Mainframe project? The collaboration between GSE UK and Open Mainframe is something you know relatively new for us. Um, we got introduced to them a number of years ago, and obviously because of the the whole pandemic and that, we got slowed down a little bit. But yeah, the the Open Mainframe is a, is another great asset to our sort of what we call those working groups because bringing the message of open source and Linux on Z and all of that to the conference, I think it's going to be a really it's it's going to be a big attraction for our visitors and I think it will drive more visitors to the conference. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for the Open Mainframe product to project to um, how do I say this recruit. 
yeah, new members to the Open Mainframe project and get and make people more aware of what they're doing. Um, I think they do a very good job of that, but I think they'll being at the conference will give them even greater exposure and greater opportunity. Um, I hope that it, the, the conference is a, a, is a huge success for them and that they look to extend that relationship with us by coming to other events and perhaps the um, the virtual event that we'll do in, in 2025 to be part of that as well. Um, what we find is people who join our family very rarely leave. So they're probably going to be stuck with us now forever and a day, um, which will be which yeah, will be a great collaboration for us all. When we look at GSE UK, uh, what what is your opinion? What is your view? What is your approach towards open source in general? I think open source is a good thing. I think collaboration and, and getting people to contribute ideas and thought into into kind of that development and that development process is a really good thing. Um, I think some of the challenges come from some of the organisations who would perhaps consume open source may be a little conservative about putting that open source yeah, onto their production systems on their mainframe. So, yeah, having that kind of um, validated, um, sort of authorised open source code, something that's been checked and validated and proven not to have any any issues with it is the more we do of that i think the the adoption of open source will become greater i think the adoption of linux on the mainframe linux on z is quite pervasive in and around europe now and we're seeing a lot more of it people see the value and also the skills become more transferable trans transferable i can take a, a linux administrator and give them a linux instance running on the mainframe and they don't notice the difference yet in the majority of cases. Um, so I think the op open source is a, is a good thing. I think it will take some of the larger financial organisations time to adopt because of they're a little bit conservative. But um, I think we've come a long, long way in a short period of time. Since we're talking about open mainframe, what kind of presence the project will have, the tracks of sessions at this upcoming conference? The open mainframe at the, at the, at the conference we will host in November 24 um, will have a full set of sessions. So we'll be starting at midday, sorry, we'll be starting at 1300, one o'clock on Monday, and we'll have open mainframe sessions on the Monday afternoon, all day Tuesday, all day Wednesday, and through till two, three o'clock on the Thursday. So they've, they've taken a, a, a full track and have a full agenda of some really, you know, interesting um, articles I'm um, sorry sessions we've just gone through the the call for papers so we're just finalizing the sessions they're going to pick we're hoping to see that on the agenda over the next week or two we'll look to open registration next week so we want the agenda there um, but all the tracks including the open mainframe have got a, a what appears to be a, a lot of really good sessions from some well-known speakers across the globe Mark, thank you so much for joining me today. Talk about not only the history and the story of how GSE came to exist, GSE UK, this upcoming conference, and of course, uh, participation and presence of Open Mainframe Project there. Thanks for all those great insights, and I look forward to talk to you folks again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.